Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. Yet again, there's a lot happening in the marketplace this week. New standard is in full swing. Reserveless buyouts continue. There's a lot of players putting together brand new commander decks, and all these things, plus a lot of other factors, are having an influence on card prices. We're going to talk all about it today. One quick note about this video, much like last week, you will see Zendikar rising prices here. But I haven't worked in Zendikar Rising Commander cards yet, or foils, or anything from the list. Those are still very turbulent right now. Maybe in another couple weeks you'll start seeing them in these videos, but not quite yet. Quickly before we get started, just a fast reminder, if you go to FlipSideGaming.com, you can use the Heroes promo code to save 10% on orders over $10. Currently, if you're looking to pre-order Commander Legends products, they do have them on the website. You can pick up a draft booster box of Commander Legends for $121.50 after you use the Heroes promo code, and that does include shipping in the United States. Also, whenever you use the code, it does support the channel, which is always appreciated. So thank you, and without any further ado, let's get into it. We're going to begin, as we always do, with standard. In your top six standard legal cards that have lost value this week. Coming in at number six is Nissa of Shadowed Bows. This goes down $1.29 to $8. This really hasn't seen much, if any, standard play as of yet, which is why it is soft right now. But I have seen a copy of this here or there in Pioneer Nifta Light sideboards. It is also seeing some commander play in lands, builds, and more. Number five is a very solid commander card. It is still going down in value. It did have a high price point during the pre-release season. This is Lithoform Engine. It goes down $1.41 to $18.99. And this is showing up in a number of different builds right now in Commander, including some new ones like Verisol, the Split Current, and Omnith Locus of Creation. Number four is Blight Climb Pathway, down $1.59 to $2.75. These dual lands are actually pretty sweet, but they are rares and not mythic, so as people open packs, they are getting into circulation a little bit quicker. Currently in Standard, this is in Yorian Doom Foretold decks and more. This is also seeing a little Pioneer play and some Commander play in builds like Aura Skyclave Hierophant and much more. Number three is Elder Gargaroth. This goes down $1.89 to $17.98. This was going up pretty aggressively towards the end of the previous season. Maybe this season it's not seeing as much standard play as it was seeing at the tail end of the previous one, but still, it is seeing a lot of play in sideboards and a lot of different decks too. Adventure builds, ramp builds, mono green aggro, and more. This also continues to see play in Pioneer, Modern, and Commander. Number two is Grim Tutor, the copy from Starter 1999. It goes down 375 to 169.99. This card was stable for a little while. But now it is losing value again. Of course, it lost a fair amount of value back when the Corset 2021 reprinting was announced. This hasn't seen a whole lot of standard play or anything like that, but it is a tutor, so you know it's going to continue to see Commander play in a number of different builds. Number one, Obnith Locus of Creation. It goes down 473 this week to 2243. This one is an interesting card to look at because it's obviously been a hot card. Now in standard, though, it's in a really weird place right now. It was extremely powerful, then they banned a rotation in Nature's Wrath, and that did get people to maybe think about doing some other things in Standard for a short period of time. But then since then, it is very clear that this card is still really, really good, especially in Omnith Adventure decks. But you're still going to find this in other places even beyond those. There's an Omnith Mill deck, there's also Omnith Ramp decks out there and more. However, it is still going down in value. Why is that? Well, the speculation is this card is just so good, it is going to get banned at some point. Some people think it might even get banned this Monday. I guess time will tell, but right now people are a little hesitant to pick up the card because remember, most people can't sit down and play Paper Standard. The speculation is even if it doesn't get banned on Monday, it's going to get banned before I'm able to sit down and play at a Magic Fest at some point, right? So I think that's what you're seeing this week when it comes to this drop. However, the card itself, like I said, is still extremely good in Standard. Also sees playing Pioneer and Modern, and it's a huge commander card. Not only is it a very popular commander right now, but it's showing up in the 99 of a lot of different builds there too. All right, so if Omnith Locus of Creation is going down in value, what is going up in value? Let's look at the top five standard legal cards that have gained value this week. Number five is Drown in the Lock. It goes up $1.10 to $3.36. This card is seeing a ton of play in a lot of places. In standard, it's in Demir Rogue. Sometimes it's in Demir Control and more. It's also seeing play in Pioneer, Modern, Legacy. On top of that, it is getting additional play in Commander now in those Anawan the Rune Thief builds. Many players are building around Anawan from scratch. 
Others are just getting cards so they can upgrade the Zendikar Rising sneak attack commander deck that already exists. Regardless though, this has become a very popular uncommon as of late. Number four is Ancient Green Warden. This goes up $1.15 to $19.99, and this has seen a little standard play, sometimes an Omnith Mill. Lots of commander play though with this card, including in new builds like Omnith Locus of Creation, Phyleth the World Sculptor, Hashaya Soul of the Wilds, and Obun Moldaya Ancestor. Obun, very similar to Anawan, sometimes people are just building around that card from scratch. Other times they're trying to upgrade that Zendikar Rising Lands Wrath Commander deck. Number three, Renko Master of Pranks. This goes up $1.55 to $12.87. This is seeing a lot of play right now in Standard Demir Rogues, Rakdos Midrange, Mono Black Aggro, and more. Pioneer, it sees play in Mono Black Aggro there too. And it has seen increased commander play in Anawan the Rune Thief, Tiny Bones Trinket Thief, Tazri Beacon of Unity, and Zareth Sand the Trickster. Number two is another dual land. This one, though, is going up in value. It is Clearwater Pathway. This was actually dropping last week, so it's rebounding a little bit. Going up $1.73 to $6.75. Currently in standard, you'll find this in Demir Rogues, Demir Control, Grixis Control, Yorian Doom Foretold, and more. This has been getting a little Pioneer play, too. Also seeing Commander play in Anawan the Rune Thief and much more. And number one is a Mythic from the new set that is seeing a lot of play. I think this was undervalued during the pre-release time. This is Agadim's Awakening going up $2.99 this week to $16.40. In standard, this is in Demir Rogues. Most of the time you'll find this in Rakdos Midrange and more. Pioneer, it's in Dredgeless Dredge and more there. Modern, it's in Lurus Death Shadow and Oops All Spells and other decks in that format too. It's seeing Legacy play as well. And in Commander, this is showing up in Anawan the Rune Thief builds or a Skyclave Hierophant and much more. And that brings us to Pioneer and your top 7 Pioneer legal cards that have lost value this week. Coming in at number 7 is Cyclonic Rift from Return to Ravnica. This goes down $1.49 to $21.21. This was reprinted in Double Masters. Ever since that reprinting, all the various copies of this card have been going down in value. This does see a little Pioneer play, sometimes in Wilderness Reclamation. Sees a little Modern play in Mono Blue Tron. But obviously you know this as a huge Commander card in many different builds. Number 6. You didn't think you'd escape Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, did you? This goes down $1.50 to $42.51, and sure, it was banned in standard not too long ago, which is why it is going down in value right now, but this card is still seeing a ton of play in other places. In Pioneer, it's in Wilderness Reclamation, Niv to Light, Four Color Omnis, Salt Eye Delirium, and more. Modern, Uro Piles, Niv to Light, and more there. Legacy, Snowco, and even more decks in that format too. Sees lots of commander play, and is seeing more play now in the format and Omnith Locus of Creation builds too. Number five is another card that was reprinted in Double Masters, the Scarab God. This is the one from Hour of Devastation. It goes down $1.61 to $15.99. And most of the time you'll find this in Niv Delight sideboards and Pioneer. But this is a pretty popular commander and is seeing increased play now in Anawan the Rune Thief decks too. Number four is Emrakul, the Promised End, down $205 to $37.99. Not really seeing a ton of Pioneer play right now. Sometimes it is in Mono Green Planeswalkers. Modern, this is in Tron builds there. In Commander, you'll find this in Kozilek the Great Distortion, which has gotten a push from a new card from Zendikar Rise in Forsaken Monument. Also shows up in other builds in Commander as well. Number 3 is Urborg, Tomb of Yawgmoth. This is the one from Planar Chaos. It goes down 209 to 2990. This card has been very turbulent. It jumps up, goes back down. It does see play though in Pioneer. You're going to find this in Mono Black Aggro, Rakdos Pyromancer, and more. Also, it gets Modern, Legacy, and Vintage play, plus it is a highly played Commander card in many different decks. Number 2 is Rakdos, Lord of Riots. Now, this is the copy from the Ravnica Allegiance Rakdos Guild Kit. This particular copy only comes in foil. It goes down $229 to $438 this week. So you might remember this spiked a few weeks back when it started to dry up in the online marketplace. Well, it appears maybe some more copies have now entered the marketplace and we're seeing the price normalize. This is a popular commander, also sees play in other builds, including Kali of the Vast, and that was just reprinted not too long ago in Double Masters. Number one, Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger. This card continues to retract after some recent increases. It goes down 437 to 4595. You'll find this one in Mono Green Planeswalkers. In Modern, you'll find this in Tron Builds Legacy Mono Green Cloud Post. And in Commander, this is another card that's in Kozilek the Great Distortion and other builds there too. All right, on to the top six Pioneer legal cards that have gained value this week. Again, you're going to notice this week as we go through the rest of this video, the key driver for cards going up in value continues to be Commander. Number six is Ramanap Excavator. This goes up 87 cents to 12.21. In Modern, this does see play in Selesnia Titan Fields. Also, this gets a little legacy play too. 
Not a whole lot of Pioneer play, at least not yet. It is a highly played Commander card, though, above everything else in a lot of different builds. This has seen increased play in Omnith Locus of Creation, Obun Moldaya Ancestor, Phylith World Sculptor, and more. Number 5 is Psychic Corrosion, up 93 cents to 335. This has also seen increased Commander play in Anawan the Rune Thief, Bruvac the Grand Eloquent, and Zareth Sand the Trickster. Number 4, Escape Shift. This is the one from Morning Tide. It goes up 202 to 1974. Of course, you'll find this in modern Escape Shift builds. Again, another card that doesn't see a whole lot of Pioneer play or anything. In Commander, it's in Lands builds and more. Also in new builds like Omnith Locus of Creation, Obun Moldaya Ancestor, Phylith World Sculptor, and more there. And it did get a Command Zone mention this week too, which could have brought some more eyes onto it. Number 3, Sword of the Animus. Now, this card has been seeing a fair amount of Commander play previous to Zendikar Rising coming out. It's in those Sir Gwen, Hero of Ashvale builds and more. However, because of the tie-in with lands here, it has been seeing more play recently. But that's not the only reason it has been seeing more play. If you look at the card closely, you do have the opportunity to take a basic land from your library and put it directly into play tapped. But it is only a basic land, and that's not going to work for all lands builds because they might not have enough basics. Some will like this, but there's other new builds too that have been pushing this card. Ultimately, it's been seeing increased play in decks like Anawan the Rune Thief, Akiri Fearless Voyager, Charix the Raging Isle, Omnith Locus of Creation, and more. The Mystery Booster copy goes up 90 cents to 1007. The Arch Enemy Nickel Bolas copy up $1.61 to $11.47. Commander 2017 up $1.63 to 990. And Magic Origins goes up 243 this week to 1021. Number two is Omnith Locus of the Royal, another card that doesn't see a whole lot of Pioneer play, but it does see modern play in five color elementals, and of course the main reason it's going up this much right now is because it is a popular commander, but also seeing more play in Omnith Locus of Creation builds there. It goes up 267 to 1899. And number one, surprise, surprise, another card that doesn't necessarily see Pioneer play, but it does see play in Modern, Legacy, and Vintage. Maybe not as much play in those formats compared to what it was seeing a number of months ago, but it is still in a lot of decks there. But again, the reason this is moving is Commander. This is seeing increased play in Omnith Locus of Creation, Obun Moldaya Ancestor, Phyleth World Sculptor, Mirag Fury of Akum, and more. And it did get a Command Zone mention this week as well, which again could have brought some more attention to the card. Fifth Dawn goes up $1.54 to $52.78. Corset 2019 up 248 to 42.10, and the 10th edition copy goes up 524 to 44.49. And that takes us to the top six modern legal cards that have lost value this week. Number six is Acroma's Memorial from Future Sight. It goes down 249 to $30.56. This was reprinted in the list, so you could find this in your Zendikar Rising set booster packs perhaps when you open them. This is in a number of commander builds, including Kozilek the Great Distortion, Ashaya Soul of the Wild, and much more. Number 5 is Sword of Fire and Ice from Modern Masters, down 258 to 6813. This was recently reprinted in Double Masters, which is why this copy is soft right now. It does continue to see Modern and some Legacy play with Stoneforge Mystic. That was another card reprinted in Double Masters. And it does see increased Commander play too in Akiri Fearless Voyager and Charix the Raging Isle. Number 4 is Sliver Legion from Future Sight. This card has been hot for a very long time, ever since the reprinting of Sliver Hive Lord and Sliver Overlord. But now it is starting to stabilize down, going down 258 this week to 96.49. Obviously, great card for your Commander Sliver builds. Number three, Blight Steel Colossus from Mirrodin Besiege. This is another card that was reprinted in Double Masters. This goes down 267 this week to 44.74. And this does see vintage play, but also Commander play in Kozilek the Great Distortion and much more. Number two, Rings of Bright Hearth from Lorwyn down 294 to 62.59. And this is retracting due to some recent increases, so not too surprising to see this stabilization, but the card is highly played in Commander in a lot of different places. You'll find this in Attracts of Praetor's Voice builds, that of course was recently reprinted in Double Masters. Krenko Mob Boss builds will play this too. Again, another card that was reprinted this time in Jumpstart, and it's a great combo enabler in general in the format. Number one is Blood Moon from the Dark. It goes down 364 to $50.93. We saw this jump up last week and normalizes back down this week. Incidentally, this is another card that was reprinted in Double Masters, but this card does see modern play. You'll find this in Grow Midrange, Blitz, Mono Red, Aggro, and more. Sees a little legacy play too, but it has been seeing more and more commander play recently, especially in competitive decks. Also, this finds itself in a number of decks around commanders that were recently reprinted, things like Krenko Mob Boss, Goto Bandit Warlord, for example. On top of that, there's some new decks that are running this, things like Phyleth World Sculptor, 
Surzoth Chaos Rider, and Morag Fury of Akum. Time for the top 5 modern legal cards that have gained value this week. Coming in at number 5 is Trade Roots, the one from 9th edition. We talked last week that a lot of 9th edition cards have been especially turbulent. This one goes up $1.77 to five forty-nine. but this is seeing increased commander play in Omnith Locus of Creation and Charks the Raging Isle. Number 4, Ulamog the Infinite Gyre, another card that sees playing Kozilek the Great Distortion decks and Commander and more there. Ultimate Masters goes up $1.90 to forty-three twenty-four. Modern Masters 2015 up $1.96 this week to $47.27. Number three is the worldwide copy of Omnith Locus of Mana. This goes up 234 to 3824, and this is actually getting reprinted in Commander Collection Green, but nevertheless, this original copy is going up in value. It's a popular commander and is seeing increased play now in Omnith Locus of Creation and a Shia Soul of the Wild decks. Also, too, you might have noticed that the World Wake foil for this card spiked pretty aggressively this week. There does appear to be some market manipulation going on, so if you are looking to pick up a foil, just be careful. Number two is Ink Fathom Infiltrator. This is a rogue. It's going up 246 this week to 795. I've already used my one per video on this recently, but just quickly, I'll tell you that of course this does come from that time period of magic where there were less packs open, there was a recession in the game, so the cards tend to get a little spiky if there's some interest on them, even uncommon sometimes. This one is seeing increased commander play in Anawan the Rune Thief and Zareth Sand the Trickster. Number one is Mirror Gallery. It goes up 319 to 1999. This is drying up a little bit this week in the online marketplace. It is yet to be reprinted and it is in various commander builds, including the recently reprinted Riku of Two Reflections. You can find that one in Double Masters 2. And maybe a card like this could become more useful when we see what's in Commander Legends. That brings us to the Vintage Spotlight. This is where we talk about cards that see play in Vintage, Legacy, 93, 94, or cards that are just important among collectors. Again, this week you're going to see there's a number of buyouts going on. It's not as aggressive as what we were seeing a few weeks ago, but it's still happening. Like I have been doing with this section, I'm only going to point out if the card is not on the reserve list because it's just easier that way. We'll begin with our Gothian Enchantress from Ursa Saga, not on the reserve list. It goes up 281 to 2850. This is in Legacy, Selesnya, Enchantress combo decks. Also a great commander card in any enchantment heavy build. This has seen increased play in that format in Sisse Weatherlight Captain builds that are using the Corset 2021 Shrines. Vampiric Tutor from Eternal Masters, not on the reserve list. This is great in Vintage, great in Commander. It goes up 302 this week to 124.80. Scrubland from Revised, it goes up 303 to 236.02. A lot of these Revised Dual Lands are starting to calm down a little bit, but we are going to see a couple more today. Here's the next one, Bayou from Revised, up 325 to 437.48. And Underground Sea from Revised up 1068 to 629.99. Next we have King Suleiman. This goes up 1448 to 147.57. Vevictus Asmati from Legends. This is not on the reserve list. As a matter of fact, it got reprinted in Chronicles if you want a cheap copy. But this Legends copy does go up 1649 this week to 3709. It goes to show you that it's not just about reserve list cards being bought out all the time. There are players looking at these high grade cards and older sets that are not on the reserve list. Brain Geyser from Unlimited, it got one more printing in Revised that goes up 1651 to 149.99. Strip Mine, this one's not on the reserve list, but the copy we're talking about today is the one you see on the screen. It's from Antiquities and it has that small tower in the foreground. It goes up 1754 to $80.44. This happens to be one of the cards that got reprinted as a Zendikar Rising Expedition. Yogmoth's Will from Urza Saga, it did get a printing as a Judge Foil before they closed that loophole. It goes up 1934 to 192.22 this week. This sees playing Vintage as well as Commander. Tanos's Coffin up $30.52 to 119.95 this week. Livonia Salone goes up 38.96 to 144.95. Bartel Runax up 42.78 to 239.07, or is it? This is the point in the video where I'm going to clarify if this is market manipulation or if this increases for real. In this case, it feels like it's mostly market manipulation. When you look at the high-grade copies that have sold recently, they've been going for about $40 to $105. Next is Aladdin from Arabian Nights. This is another card that actually is not on the reserve list and was reprinted in Chronicles. In theory, going up $43.53 to $108.47 this week, but high-grade copies are selling between $50 and $100. So close, but maybe not quite $108.47. Copy Artifact from Unlimited. This was reprinted one more time and revised. It goes up 4381 to 425. 
When it comes to recent sales, there's a wide variety of different prices when it comes to high grade copies. I have seen them going for anywhere between 151 and 450. Angus McKenzie, this is actually a pretty good commander card going up 5587 to 28086 this week. Actually, high grade copies are close. They're going for around 225. Guardian Beast goes up 5814 to 44995, and this is actually about right for a high grade copy. Nether Void up 12486 to 66198. So again, if you're looking for a high grade copy, this is maybe in the ballpark, but not quite exact. I have seen them going for around 540. Wheel of Fortune from Unlimited. This did get a reprinting and revised. That also got a Judge Foil reprinting before they closed that loophole. This copy though goes up 128.22 to 699 this week. And when it comes to actual high grade sales, I've seen them going for 330 to 525. Tundra from Unlimited, of course, got reprinted one more time and revised. This copy, in theory, if you look at your big websites, they say it's going up 413.27 to 1,149.99 this week. Is that true? Not quite. I've been seeing high grade sales for 750 to 770. Time Twister from Unlimited up 1,299.99 to 4,199.99. That's actually about the going rate for a high grade copy. There just wasn't a lot of high grade copies for sale recently, which is why the price appeared to dip. Okay, for the last two cards in this section, I even debated about putting these on because the market manipulation is super aggressive. But again, I thought it could be a good lesson to compare what you're seeing on the big websites to what you see when it comes to actual sales. Mishra's workshop this week going up $5,900.15 to $9,499.99 technically. Actually, high-grade copies are going for about $2,225 to $2,750. And finally, the Tabernacle at Pendrel Vale goes up $8,092.25 to $9,800, or does it? No, still an expensive card though. High grade copies go between $3,000 and $3,400. Alright, that takes us to the Commander Spotlights. A lot of cards to look at, so let's get right into it. Mikokoro Center of the Sea, this is the one from Saviors of Kamigawa, up a dollar to $569. And this has seen some increased Commander playing, Bruvac the Grandiloquent, Zerzoth Chaos Rider, and more. Reap goes up a dollar to six ninety nine, and this card has seen a little bit of increased interest in Commander. Some players are picking it up for those lands builds that want to juggle lands for landfall triggers. Bitter Boss from Modern Masters twenty fifteen up a dollar oh six to thirty three sixty three. This has been in a lot of builds recently, like Alila Artful Provocateur, Yuriko the Tiger's Shadow. That one just got reprinted in Mystery Boosters not too long ago, and it is seeing increased play now in Anna on the Rune Thief decks. Plus, it does see some modern play too. Sylvan Safekeeper. This is the one from Judgment, the original. It goes up $1.08 to $11.22. Pretty highly played Commander card, seeing more play now in Omnith Locus of Creation and Ashaya Soul of the Wild builds. Rotlong Reanimator. This one is a Cleric. It goes up $1.10 to $8.95. And it is seeing play in some newer builds like Aura Skyclave Hierophant and Tabarak's Hope's Demise. Dance of Many from the Dark up $1.11 to $4.72. This does see some commander play, but this original copy is drying up a little bit in the online marketplace this week. Najila the Blade Blossom up $1.12 to $18.88. Very popular commander. Also now seeing increased play in Tazri Beacon of Unity builds. Phyrexian Tower. This is the copy from Jumpstart. Another card, though, that was reprinted recently on the list. It goes up $1.13 to $16.27. This sees a ton of commander play but is seeing more play now in Aura Skyclave Hierophant builds. Conqueror's Flail up at $1.14 to $23.52, seeing increased commander play in Akiri Fearless Voyager builds. Also, you'll find this in Godo Bandit Warlord, and that was reprinted recently in Double Masters. Vesuvian Doppelganger from Revised that is on the reserve list that does see some commander play up at $1.17 to $18.51. Thada Adele Inquisitor goes up at $1.19 to $9.91. This is a rogue and is seeing increased play in Anawan the Rune Thief, Tazri Beacon of Unity, and Zarat San the Trickster. Martyr's Cry from the Dark, this is on the reserve list. Again, it does see a little commander play here or there, but I do think the reason it is moving up is either because this is the beginning of a targeted buyout, or this is a panic buy. People see that this card hasn't moved up aggressively too much yet, and they feel like this could be next on the list. It goes up $1.22 this week to $7.76. Coercive Portal, solid commander card in a lot of different builds. It goes up $1.29 to $9.82. Personal Tutor, you know this is going to see some commander play being a tutor, and it is getting harder and harder to find all the time in good condition. It goes up $1.32 to $4,807. 
Kozilek Butcher of Truth from Ultimate Masters. This is a commander card, again, that you'll find in Kozilek, the Great Distortion decks, and more. Also, too, it's in Modern Mardu Stoneblade, sometimes in Legacy Mono Green Cloud Post. It goes up $1.32 this week to $57.19. Food Chain from Mercadian Mass. This was reprinted on the list as well. It goes up $1.39 to $69.65 this week. Very popular commander combo enabler, and it is seeing some additional play now in Omnith Locus of Creation builds at times. Earthcraft is on the reserve list. It goes up $1.50 to $102.49. Not a huge increase this week, but it does appear to be mostly stable. This has seen some increased play, though, in a Shia Soul of the Wild builds. Gift of Estates, this is the copy from Portal, and I think really this is moving because this particular copy is drying up this week in the online marketplace. It goes up $1.53 to $9.91. This was recently reprinted in Mystery Boosters, but this does see a fair amount of Commander play. Vesuva, another card that was reprinted on the list, but this is the one from Time Spiral. It goes up $1.59 to $29.98. This is seeing some increased Commander play in Omnith Locus of Creation, Obun Moldaya Ancestor, Ashaya Soul of the Wild. Also does see modern play in Amulet Titan and Selesnia Titan Field. And in Legacy, it is in Mono Green Cloud Post. Titania, Protector of Argoth. This is a fairly popular commander. Another card you'll find in Lance builds, including some new ones like Omnith Locus of Creation, Obun Moldaya Ancestor, and Ashaya Soul of the Wild. Commander 2014 goes up $1.05 to $22. Commander Anthology up $1.62 to $22.01. Pact of Negation from Future Sight. This is another card that is being reprinted on the list. It goes up $1.70, though, to $36.89 this week. And this is seeing a lot of commander play, especially in competitive builds right now. In Modern, you'll find this in Ad Nauseum, Amulet Titan, and more there. Also gets some Legacy play, too. Necropotence, the original copy from Ice Age, goes up $1.73 to $28.99. Very popular commander card, seeing a little additional play now in Aura Skyclave Hierophant builds. Also, of course, this does see vintage play in Doomsday and more. The Mercadian Mass copy of Bribery. This goes up $1.75 to $29.99. And many times you'll find this in Send Triplets builds and other places in Commander. Send Triplets, though, was reprinted in Double Masters and did get a foil reprinting in WPN Mystery Boosters. Keeper of Keys. This is a rogue. It is seeing some increased play in Anna the Rune Thief, Zareth Sand the Trickster, and Tazri Beacon of Unity. It goes up $1.94 this week to $6.88. Volrath Stronghold, this is on the reserve list. He's playing a lot of different decks in Commander. It goes up 238 to 9237. Sapphire Medallion from Tempest up 246 to 2340. This is seeing increased play in Bruvac, the Grandiloquent, and Charix, the Raging Isle decks. Cover of Darkness up 253 to 1779. Traditionally, this has been a good card in Yuriko, the Tiger Shadow builds. It is now seeing increased play in Anawan, the Rune Thief, though. Argothian Elder, this is the Battle Royale copy. It goes up 265 to 677, and this is seeing some increased commander play in Ashaya Soul of the Wild Builds too. Stone Calendar, up 324 to $20.91. This is on the reserve list. It doesn't see a ton of commander play, maybe a little bit here or there, but again, this feels like maybe a targeted buyout or perhaps a panic buy. Bruvac the Grand Eloquent, this goes up 336 to 69.99. When I make these videos, I do pull the cards at different times over the course of the day. So if you looked at last week's video, this card actually has come down. It has been stable at $69.99 for a number of days now, so it does feel like maybe it's stabilizing and calming down a little bit. Remember, though, these Jumpstart cards have been pretty turbulent because of supply issues. Wizards has said they're trying to resolve that, but we'll have to kind of see what happens long term. Now, this has been a popular commander ever since it came out, and it does even combo well with a new Zendikar Rising card, Maddening Cacophony. On top of that, it's getting a little push from Anna on the Rune Thief, as some players are putting this in those builds. Sliver Queen, this is the Silver Lord that is on the reserve list. It goes up 348 to 22468 this week. Bone Dancer, a little play in the format. However, again, this feels like a reserve list buyout. It goes up 415 to 949 this week. Season of the Witch, a card that was bought out not too long ago, jumping up a little more again this week. This is on the reserve list, of course. It goes up 445 to 2995. Again, it does see a little commander play here or there. Polar Kraken on the reserve list goes up $4.90 to $13. And yes, this is a card that does allow you to get lands in your graveyard so that you could play them with something like Crucible of Worlds or Ramonap Excavator. But honestly, I don't necessarily feel like this is going up right now due to gameplay. It feels like yet another targeted buyout to some degree. Cruel Tutor from Portal. This is on the list and actually last week was losing value. It does rebound this week, up 601 to 
This is a tutor, and even though it's not the best tutor you can find in black, it is still very playable in a lot of commander builds. Scorched Ruins, this is on the reserve list going up 699 to 3776. Sure, this could be targeted to some degree because it is on the reserve list, but this one does see a fair amount of commander play. You'll find this many times in Koza like the Great Distortion builds and more. Crescendo of War goes up 749 to $12. This card did get a mention on the EDHRE cast this week, and it really took off after that point. Now, it is a fantastic card in a lot of different commander decks. Maybe it's been overlooked for a while now. It is yet to be reprinted, and the extra attention it got from the podcast, I think, was enough to make this card really dry up in the secondary market online. Another reason some players could be looking at this card right now, too, is because of one of those controversial Walking Dead cards. A deck built around the Rick Grimes card, Rick Steadfast Leader, might be interested in something like this. Fork, this is the revised copy. It is on the reserve list. It goes up 813 this week to $39. This has seen increased play in Calamax the Stormsire builds, and it does see play in other places, too. Radiant Archangel, this is on the reserve list, goes up 1020 to 29.97. Decent commander card here, and this was a target of a buyout not too long ago. Since then, the price has come back down. What you might be seeing here could be a couple of things. It could be a follow-up buyout now that the price is cheaper. It could be some players see that the price came down and they want to pick it up before it goes up again. Or it could just be an adjustment where the market is trying to find its price point after this buyout occurred. Scroll Rack from Tempest, this card is another one that you'll find on the list, and it actually lost value back when they first announced the card was going to be there. It is rebounding now, going up $12.88 to $99. This is a highly played commander card in a lot of different builds, especially good in Yuriko the Tiger's Shadow decks. Creature from the Dark, on the reserve list, going up $23.09 this week to $49.99. This looked like it was the target of a buyout not too long ago, or at least maybe a panic buy. What we're seeing now does appear to be more of a targeted buyout, but what might be happening is more of a speculative buyout because this is a human and a cleric. Because it is a cleric, it has been seeing more commander play in Aura Skyclave Hierophant builds recently, and because it is a human, players that want to build the Rick Steadfast Leader deck might be interested in this. Alright, time for the premium spotlight. I don't spend too much time on these rare promos, rare foils, because if you don't see a lot of sales of a card in any given week, you don't necessarily have very good data to go off, and in some cases that data can be manipulated. But every week I like to pick at least one card that feels like it's moving mostly naturally with the market. This week I chose Thada Adele Inquisitor. We talked about this card earlier. The only foil copy, the one from World Wake, goes up 518 to 2499. That's gonna do it for this episode of the Market Watch. As always, I'm glad to have you with me each and every week. Until next time, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.